You got zero at the table, man. All kinds of shit breaks loose. Pick me, pick me. Zero's at the table, you gotta be careful. All kinds of shit breaks loose, baby. Greetings, humans, and welcome back. I'm Joey Pigtails, and this is episode number 11 of my poker journey, coming to you from Orange City Racing and Card Club. This 1-2 PLO session was filmed on July 4th during the Big Ass High Hands promotion, where we had a chance to win $5,000 every four hours on top of the usual high hand promotion that's going on. Uh, this place was jam-packed, and ships are flying everywhere. Before I jump into the hands, I first want to talk about a topic that came up on Twitter. As you all know, the WSOP main event is nearing an end, and numbers have been released regarding attendance for the main event specifically. It was really cool to see that more women played the main event this year than last year. However, representation for this demographic was actually down as a percentage of total entrance. Thanks to Jennifer Newell for compiling this data and working hard to get this information from the WSOP. Jennifer has worked to get this information for a number of years and recently posted her findings on Twitter, amongst other places, for us to see and digest. Jennifer, I applaud your efforts and dedication, and I hope that we can continue this conversation and keep it going and make a difference for our community. From looking at these numbers, it is clear that representation of women in poker is still lagging far behind the normal population, and the comments on Twitter seem to share a lot of shock and disappointment with these numbers too, but there really didn't seem like any significant engagement on what I thought was the important question to ask, so I asked it. What can I do to positively, positively impact this? As expected, there were a number of men who responded to Jennifer with a variety of misogynistic comments and generalizations, and seeing some of these has really lit a fire under me. These comments highlight a couple of the reasons why women don't feel comfortable playing poker. Rampant misogyny. I can't possibly claim to know how women feel at the poker table, but as a human being, I know that I want to be treated equally and fairly and with a general level of respect when out amongst my peers. I want to feel that I belong, and from the responses that women provided in that Twitter thread, that feeling is not being felt by most of them. We all have a responsibility to create an inclusive environment where everyone feels welcome to come and compete at the poker table. And as I stated numerous times in that Twitter thread when responding to the misogyny, there comes a time where we as men have to stop speaking and start listening. Just because we do not see or perceive bad behavior or we don't believe that the environment is hostile towards women doesn't mean that it isn't. When someone tells you that your actions or the actions of another make them feel uncomfortable, you have a responsibility to do some soul searching, to empathize and learn and evolve and understand, to at least consider that what we deem to be acceptable may not actually be okay. I want to hear from the ladies out there. What do you think we can do to make our poker rooms more welcoming to you? Please let me know in the comments, or on Twitter, or threads, or anywhere you find me. I'm not going to harp on this too much more here, but I am going to re reiterate the same message I share with you at the end of every vlog that I do. Be a good human. Set the example. Alright, let's get into the hands from this wild session. The first hand I play is a $15 double board bomb pot, and I look down at ace, queen, 10, 9 with nut clubs, which is a pretty strong hand to start with. We're seven ways to a flop of queen, jack, 10, 2 diamonds, and 7, 2 king rainbow, and I flop top and bottom pair on the top, and a backdoor flush and straight draw on the bottom. While strong, I don't have a nutted hand as of yet, and decide to pull here by checking with the intention of calling anything that comes my way. <laughs> The player across from me goes all in for $85, and when folded to me, I do as I intended and call, hoping for more action behind. We do get one more call and see turn cards of the four diamonds on top and the jack of clubs in the bottom. I've now picked up massive equity on bottom, but still no made hand. I check with the intention of calling off, and the other player with chips checks behind, which I'm glad to see. The river is the jack of spades on top and the five of clubs on the bottom, so I improve the nuts on one board. I fire $100 in case I'm ahead on top too, and the opponent calls showing he had jack, ten, five, deuce on top that rivered a boat, and we end up chopping this pot. In the next hand I see jack of clubs, ten of hearts, nine of spades, nine of clubs. There's a button straddle from a player I expect to raise with anything decent, so I limp after a few other players with the intention of calling a single raise. Sadly, he doesn't raise, so we are six ways to a flop of jack of spades, nine of diamonds, seven of clubs. 
I'm blocking top set, but there's a straight on the board, so we need to tread cautiously. <laughs> in another position, player bets pot for $30. I call, and another player pots it for $150. This is clearly the nuts, but I'm blocking it, have a draw to the same straight, and I'm getting great pot odds after the other player calls as well. The initial Razor fires his last $30 on the King turn card, and we both call to see a river of the Ace of Diamonds, and we both check. The early positions uh, players 10-8 holds up, and my set, as well as the other players set of jacks, go into the muck. By blocking my boat redraw and having this other player call the re-raise, it was clear I was behind the whole way. Food for thought. After ripping it in last hand with King, Queen, Queen, Jack double suited to losing to King's full, we pick up the action on the next hand with me shoving my last $125 in preflop with Queen, Jack, 10, 9, 1 suit over a couple of limps and open to 30 and a couple of calls. We end up all in three ways to a flop of two of spades, Jack of clubs, eight of diamonds where I flop a pair and wrap and then another Jack comes on the turn and seven of hearts in the river giving me trips. I was up against Ace Ace King Queen and Ace 279 double suited and end up scooping this pot to get close to my original buy in. Oh yeah! I've been seeing a lot of flops so far, oftentimes with marginal hands like this one. 10 10 7 5 1 suit. I limp, another player makes it 25, and we end up seeing a flop 5 ways of Queen 10 3 2 diamonds. There's a lead for pot of 125, and I jam over for 250-ish, and the only and only the initial better calls. He ends up hitting a flush on the river, and I'm down to about $120 again of my initial $500 buy-in. I've been getting kind of frustrated with this session so far, both with my play and with the runouts, and tilt is taking over a bit. Looking down at Ace King Queen 4 double suited, I open a $20 from early position and get 4 calls, leaving me with an SPR of 1. On a flop of 238 rainbow, giving me a gutter and 2 backdoor flush draws, I punt my $98 into the middle, hoping for some folds. And instead, I get a snap call from the guy across from me, and another call as well. The turn is a ten of clubs giving me a flush draw, and the river's a king of diamonds, uh, king of diamonds leaving me with one pair. And miraculously, no one wants to turn their hand over. One pair is good to scoop this. I put my rebuy back in my pocket, and we move forward. From the small line, I look down at 5522 single suit. There's an under the gun open for $20, and we go four ways to a flop of ace, five, deuce, rainbow. I flop two sets here, and while the under the gun player can have ace, ace in their range, uh, he's been playing a lot of hands, so I'm feeling pretty good with this flop. If anything, I have two outs to the nuts, right? Right? The under the gun player leads for $70. It's folded to me, and I pot it, putting him all in, which he calls rather quickly. The turn is a jack, and the river's a nine, and our opponent turned a set of jacks to take this one down. Okay. I've added on another $400 to get up to a full stack, so let's turn this session around. <laughs> And what better way to do that than with a bomb pot? I look down at King of Spades, Jack of Clubs, Ten of Hearts, Four of Spades, and we see flops of uh, Nine of Spades, Ace of Spades, Seven of Hearts on top, and King of Hearts, Two of Clubs, King of Diamonds on the bottom, giving me a nut flush draw on one board and trip kings on the other. <clears throat> with $105 in, I bet $50 when checked to uh, in order to try and pull multiple opponents into this pot, and I do end up getting two calls. <clears throat> With a five of spades on top, I turn the nuts there. The bottom board gets another deuce, and when checked to, I expect to be ahead on the bottom board most of the time, so I put both of these guys all in, and they both call. The rivers come the six of clubs on top and the five of diamonds on the bottom, and the only hand we end up seeing is the guy who takes the bottom board, hitting the backdoor nine high diamond draw on the river. Uh, he was drawing dead on top with the queen high flush, and I get a bit unlucky having to chop this with him. In the next hand, I see ace, queen, ten, nine, three spades. There are a couple of limps to me, and I limp as well for some reason, but should have opened this. I, I really can't explain what I'm thinking here, but it, it is what it is. With seven players to the flop, we see ace, ace, three. When checked to me, I fired $25 to build a pot, and I only get one call, which should be the other ace here. Perhaps it's pocket threes, but I'm pretty sure it's just an ace. 
The turn is a 9, giving me top boat, and I expect to be able to get this all in with the opponent. So I bet $75, and my opponent tank jams for $270, which I snap call with the nuts. The river is the jack of spades, and I finally get a hand to hold up where I can scoop it. Oh yeah! With ace-jack-10-8-3 clubs, I limp again from early position along with a couple of other players to see a raise to $25. With four of us in, the flop comes ace, king, queen, rainbow, giving me the nuts while also blocking boats. I fire $75 hoping for some callers, but everyone folds. On a dry board like this, perhaps I should be betting smaller? What do you think? Let me know. Here's another suited ace hand that I limp with. Ace, ten, six, two. Two clubs, two diamonds. We end up going six ways to a flop of king of spades, queen of spades, seven of diamonds, and it's checked around. The turn is the best possible card that I can ask for, and the jack of diamonds giving me Broadway and a diamond draw. Small blind now leads for $20. There's one call behind, and I go ahead and raise to 100 The small blind reluctantly calls, as does the player on my right. The river is the three of diamonds giving me a flush, and when checked to, I no longer have the nuts, and I don't ever expect to get called by worse here, so I check back and my diamond flush is good to scoop this $330 pot. And here we have another $15 double board bomb pot, and I look down at 10-7 deuce deuce badoogie, which isn't very sexy at all. On flops of 4, 10, 6, 3 diamonds and 2, 6, 9, 2 clubs, I check with the field to a player who bets $50. It's going to be really easy for multiple people to have flushes on the top board, so I'm hoping no one has 9-9 nine, nine or the last combo of 6-6. Six, six. And I end up calling to evaluate, and two others come along as well. Both boards pick up an ace on the turn, and it's checked around. The rivers come a 5 on top and a jack on the bottom, so not much has changed on either board. Thankfully, this is checked around as well, and as expected, my set on bottom ends up being good for half this pot. I'm not exactly certain I could have called a bet on the river with this extremely vulnerable hand, but let me know what you think. From the big blind, I look down at 10 of hearts, 10 of spades, 8 of diamonds, 8 of hearts. An early position player makes it $15. There's one call, and I go ahead and pot it to $60 to see both of these guys call. With a flop of ace of clubs, two of spades, ace of spades, I should be able to rep flopping quad aces here, but my spidey senses are tingling, so I check, and it's checked around. The turn is a nine of spades, and I'm going with my read, and I check, and it's checked around again. The river is a seven of hearts, and I check again to see the next player grab a bunch of red ships and hastily fling them into the pot without counting them. The other player and I both fold, and he shows us quad aces. Wow. Blood dodge there, as I would have called his jam preflop. Another bomb pot? Oh yeah. Jack of clubs, ten of spades, seven of hearts, four of clubs for me, baby. With $105 in, we see flops of King of Hearts, Jack of Hearts, Six of Hearts on top, which isn't my board, and King of Clubs, Five of Hearts, Queen of Hearts in the bottom. The flops are checked around, and a player bets $25 on the turns of the Ten of Hearts on top and the Ace of Clubs in the bottom. With the nut straight on bottom and two of the other cards required for the same straight sitting on the top board, I feel good about flatting this and hoping for more multi-way value. And we do end up uh, going five ways to uh, the rivers, which are the four diamonds on top and the nine of diamonds in the bottom. The early position player bets $100, and while I could raise, I feel like calling is the best play to get more value from people behind, as well as to avoid a potential quartering. We do get one call, and my straight is good for half of this pot. Here we have another bomb pot. With King of Hearts, Queen of Clubs, Six of Clubs, Four of Spades, and $105 in, we see flops of Two of Clubs, Four of Hearts, Four of Clubs, and King of Clubs, Six of Hearts, Jack of Hearts. An early position player bets 105 and I'm the only caller. The opponent then says, you want to put $50 in and run it? Which I oblige, since we're heads up and I don't have anything on the other board, so let's see what happens. The top board runs out of Jack of Clubs, Two of Hearts, and the bottom runs out Eight of Clubs, eight, Ace of Hearts, and my opponent announces Set of Kings on bottom and Clubs on top, which has me a bit alarmed, but 
Uh, even though I was a bit worried, my clubs were actually better on top, so we end up chopping this pot. In the last hand of the session, I look down at Ace of Clubs, Ten of Clubs, Ten of Diamonds, Three of Clubs. There's a limb to me, and we see a flop four ways of Three of Diamonds, King of Clubs, Ten of Hearts, giving me middle set and back doors. An early position player bets $20. There are two calls, and I call as well since this board isn't all that wet. <clears throat> With the two of clubs in the turn, I now pick up a nut flush draw. The early position player now bets really small into this $100 pot. I bet a $35, which sees one call before I go ahead and pop it up to $200. The initial better calls off his last $180 or so, and the other player folds. The river is a seven of diamonds, and my set is good enough to take this one down. Well, there's another volatile session in the books. Shortly after I stopped filming, I left and got a meal, and then actually went back and played for a few more hours. The run good continued, and I managed to make a few more Benjamins before calling it a night, so overall it was a productive day at the tables. <laughs> I know that PLO seems like a very daunting game to learn. There are a lot of resources out there that can bring you up to speed, but sometimes it takes more than studying to pick this game up and learn the nuances. If anyone out there is looking for a coach, I'm going to be opening up my schedule a bit starting in August to take on a student or two for a few hours a week. If that's something that you're interested in, reach out to me and we can discuss the details and put together a plan based upon your needs. Looking ahead, I'm going to be playing the $570 buy-in, $300,000 guarantee event in Daytona this weekend, which is hosted by Matt Berkey. I have a long, uh, last longer bet with some friends for the Thursday 11 a.m. flight, so come out and play with us. I'm also looking to head down to Hollywood for Hard Rock's $400, $1 million guarantee event the weekend of the 29th, and I may actually stay longer for some PLO events, so let me know if you're going to, uh, to be down there and come say hello. I'm getting close to passing 400 subscribers. Thank you all for your continued support. I appreciate all of you taking the time to support my efforts through watching, liking, and leaving a comment and questions for me to respond to. My channel isn't monetized in any form yet, so the time I spend making these videos is more or less a labor of love. Thanks again for stopping by, everyone. I'm Joey Pigtails, and I am transparent, reminding you to be a good human. Until next time, bye!